Hi, this is Robin Bremer, the author of the Kingdom Living series and the Kingdom Living Bible Study course and the Pocket Guides. And today I want to share with you how you are free from the law and the Ten Commandments because the perfect sacrifice set you free from that law. Let's take a look at our first scripture and that is uh, Deuteronomy 17, 1. And that talks about how a sacrifice had to be without spot or blemish. In order for it to be a sacrifice, it had to be perfect. And that law is in Deuteronomy 17, 1. It says, You shall not sacrifice to the Lord your God a bull or a sheep which has a blemish or a defect, for this is an abomination to the Lord. Now, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice because he had to be a perfect sacrifice in order for him to meet the requirements of the law. Hebrews 10, 7, uh, 10 12 says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for one one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Now he could not have sat down if he was not the perfect sacrifice, if the sacrifice did not do the job that it was meant to do. He could not have sat down because the priest had to always stand because their job was never done. And year after year they had to keep repeatedly adding and doing more sacrifices. Now the second thing I want you to look at is the Word of God is the perfect seed that you became born again through the Word of God. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says you have been, haven't been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible seed through the Word of God which lives and abides forever. So you uh, had the perfect sacrifice given for your salvation and because Jesus is the perfect sacrifice you are saved forever if he was an imperfect sacrifice you could not be saved forever you would the, another sacrifice would be have to be offered so right there that shows uh, number one that um, Jesus was a perfect sacrifice therefore you are saved forever and the Word of God is the perfect seed you have been born again by uh, according to 1 Peter 1.23, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. The Word of God is incorruptible seed, and that incorruptible seed caused you to be born again. Now, if the seed was corruptible, you would have to be born again and again and again. But because the seed is corrupt, uh, incorruptible, you only have to be born again once. Ephesians uh, 527 says that he may present her the bride us to him a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing <clears throat> but that she should be holy and without blemish and because of his sacrifice and because of the perfect seed we are now without spot or wrinkle and we are holy and blameless and without blemish not because of our works or our obedience or anything else that has anything to do with us except for us accepting Jesus and now the next scripture I want to point out to you is no man could take anybody who was saved out of Jesus' hand. He said in John 10, 28 and 29, he says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which has given them to me is greater than all. In other words, he's greater than anything or anyone that would try to pluck them out of his hand. And then he goes on to say, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. In other words, we would probably probably think that we can get plucked out of God's hand by our own self, by our own sins and our own wrongdoing. But he made it plain and clear right there that neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. In other words, once you're saved, you're saved forever. It's not according to our works or obedience or anything else. It's according to what Jesus did. Now, we are saved. We, we are one with God. We are saved forever. Next point I want to make. We are one, spo one spirit with the Lord, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You don't become one spirit with the Lord one day, and then when you sin, all of a sudden he leaves you, and he's no longer one spirit with you. He, you're all by yourself, a dead spirit again. And then the last one is, we are his body. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own? In other words, God comes to live inside of us to make our spirit alive. 
and our spirit does not get alive one day and when we sin and mess up and miss the mark the next day he leaves us and we're an empty temple no he comes to stay and abide with us forever so i just wanted to reassure you that once you're saved you are born again you are saved forever um, nothing you can do can take you out of god's hand however sin has consequences so you don't want to go out and you don't want to deliberately sin and mess up uh, it's just like when you fall in love with your spouse you don't want to do anything that upsets them um, you just you just want to bless them and that's how it is when you fall in love with Jesus and when you get saved my name is Robin Bremer my website is robinbremer.net check it out and I'll talk to you tomorrow